A long propagated and debated idea among individuals who have, in one way or another, discovered that something isn't right in the world, regardless of the level at which that discovery happens, is that everyone should do their own research. However, an obvious problem then arises, and one that we all, consciously or unconsciously, have to face. On the one hand, we understand that we are being told lies, but on the other, we are guided to research the sources beyond the lie by using the possible information channels, which are all within the system. What I mean is that all pre-formatted information available comes from within the system, be it at the official accepted narratives level or at the alternative levels. All of them have been curated and are still edited and maintained by the world system regulators. Now note that by information, I mean ideas already formatted in words and ready to digest. Research, be it done by accepted or renegade experts and then presented publicly, nearly always end up finding pieces of pre-formatted information, worded details of a much larger and intricate narrative. Therefore, it is inevitable that research by itself will only ever lead to one of the accepted avenues of thinking within the world system, one that will not ever be a threat to the world's parasitic way of life, regardless of the appearance and appeals of the conclusions reached by research alone. Now, am I stating that one should do no research then? Certainly not. Research is necessary for any realization, but only up to the point of understanding how far the spell of the world goes, and that spell always, I reiterate, always needs words. Note how from a certain point onwards, even within the narratives of our own lifetimes, the political key goal of mandatory, and I repeat, mandatory, literacy for everyone began being pushed. Not that I am stating that literacy is wrong or evil, far from it. What I am stating is that literacy is taught only up to the point of acceptance of the worded spells that are inculcated into expert presentation, on one hand, and also in individual research. For example, one has to be literate to go and read the constitution of a country or the sacred texts of a cult. When one's education towards literacy went only so far as being able to read and accept words as if they were truth, the trap closes and works much better than otherwise. In fact, that is what literacy in this context is for, to give minds the ability to interpret and self-apply and self-police spell rules and wording, and not to offer tools to understand what is at the base of the words, and consequently not to understand that it is all spells in that sense. For example, in an illiterate community, one literate individual would be placed as a regulator, be it as a cult priest, a doctor, a magistrate, etc. He would be given authority to ensure that the community treats him as the only expert. Then he would, aware of it or not, enforce the world system spells onto the community. The issues there are that, firstly, not all of those experts that would be sent were competent at convincing and enforcing the spells. Secondly, there was the risk that some of the experts who were placed in key positions to control those communities would suddenly realize what they were doing and morally choose otherwise. Thirdly, when a beloved and competent community expert died, it would make it hard for his replacement to be as accepted. 
All in all, the world system realized that it had to make adjustments to move away from a structure that relied on individual enforcers so much, because that makes its spells much more fragile. The adjustments that were made were to, on the one hand, teach communities to be literate, to be able to read and recognize authority in words, and then to expand and accelerate the means of communication and the spreading of information. To communicate information is then to commune, or to become familiar, with a form that is placed inside, or in formation. So, those adjustments gradually moved away from a structure that was so overly dependent on one key individual to maintain itself, and made of everyone in the community an enforcer, because then everyone knew what the words meant, and they were taught to interpret them and treat them with authority. It would be the people themselves who would, as the expression says, spread the word, and not only spread it, but enforce its authority. In an illiterate community, a new law or directive would have to be conveyed by the individual in charge, and the only reason that would make the community obey would be either respect and love for the individual, or fear of that individual. In a literate community, however, a few posters or notice boards that could then be read by the population would make it much easier to spread and enforce a new directive, because the words interpreted would have authority value, as they were taught. A sign saying, it is forbidden by law to swim in the lake, would form in the then-literate reader's mind a programmed inner narrative. If I am caught, the law will punish me. Thus giving it authority without any need for anyone else to be present, nor for any other interaction to convince them. For more contemplation on the spells of language, I recommend revisiting the presentation named Spells and Rituals. Now, of course, I am not saying at all that illiteracy is good and literacy is evil. All I ever realized from my contemplations is that it is in the middle point between all of the forces that we can be found by realizations of truth. So neither extreme is, in my view, a solution. So literacy offered the people chances that before they wouldn't have. Among them, the chance to discover that they live under an all-encompassing spell. From there to realize that reality is not truth is but a step. However, that can only happen if intuition, the wordless counterpart of information, is brought to the fore and used as a balancing tool. How many people do you see that have discovered something was wrong, went to do their own research or bought into the research of experts, again, be them accepted or renegade, and ended up chewing the same gum over and over again without going past certain points? Research and information is needed, but has to be balanced with intuition. Intuition is the tool used in contemplation, and it is how realization finds the individual, because truth is never found, only a sense of something that then has to be translated. Then, as the realization hits, it has to be translated as best as possible into communicable words, except if one is a hermit and has nearly zero contact with the world, which isn't at all healthy by itself either, as it is just another extreme of a duality. It has to be said, of course, that using only contemplation and only intuition without any research and information is also just another extreme that leads to a dead end of jumping to conclusions, because then we lose 
key mental understanding about the world's spells that are only found by going through and into information that the world itself provides. To be able to translate a realization that emerges from a contemplation then, literacy also becomes important as a tool, this time used for a spell-breaking purpose. Truth speaks no words, but intended words can point in its general direction and nobody else can metaphorically walk in that direction for you. It really has to be you. That is why a true realization that is then communicated is never pre-formatted, although it can use pre-formatted bits to convey approximations. One great example of the mix of research with contemplation of the mix of information with intuition is Tom Carberry's YouTube channel, link in the description. Never take a recommendation as an authoritative seal. Nobody holds truth 100%. It is impossible to grasp it entirely with our minds. Nevertheless, Tom shows in his presentations how research can be used to obtain worded information that is then contemplated upon with intuition for realizations to emerge, which are then by him translated back into words. No authority is found there as none is here either. Agreement is never a necessity for those who have nothing to sell or who have no other stake in it other than sharing with love the fruits of their own interactions with the life beyond this fog. The only thing that is important is for each of you who came here, found this and are still listening, which means that you are also looking at the false nature of the world, to get inspiration to also mix research with contemplation and information with intuition. Whether you then decided to share it with others is a different matter altogether. We are not all the same, nor have the same inclinations, nor should we act in the same fields and manners. Yet, if we all have a rediscovered connection with life beyond this facade of a world, then we will have already been saved from it, even if we remain in it. To be in the world, but not of it.